Hello, my friend. I want to talk to you today about the long game of the PMP exam journey, not just getting certified. That's step one. But beyond that, what happens? I find a lot of people saying, I feel dumb. I feel stupid. My colleagues are getting certified in three weeks, two weeks. Here I am spending three months to get certified. Now, I want you to put some breaks on that negative thinking. First of all, it took me six months to get to a place where I said, enough is enough, you're going to take this exam. Notice, I didn't say six months to get ready. I said six months to the point I got fed up of studying and studying. That might sound like you. Perhaps you are thinking of taking the exam in three months or two months. I want you to know that's okay. So don't be a speed demon and go crash into a wall all for the sake of saying, I got certified in three weeks, two weeks, one week. That does nothing for your career. Whether you got certified in two years or two months or two weeks is pointless as far as the long game of mastery. I'm not in for the short game of get PMP quick. I'm in for the long game of really mastering the content, really absorbing the content. Now, let me be honest with you. I have been training this exam for 17 years, and I found on average people spend anywhere from 100 all the way up to 500 hours in some instances to get ready for this exam. So if you've been thinking, I'm a dullard, I'm stupid, why am I taking so long? Why can't I understand this? I was teaching out in the UK and I had a student who would take a quiz and he'll hit his head and say, you're stupid, you're stupid. That is stinking thinking, my friend. Don't do what that guy did. Don't hit your head and say you're stupid. I want to share with you the five C's to playing the long game in your PMP prep. This is for those individuals who are going to take a significant amount of time compared to others. And I want to remind you of why we take different lengths of time to get certified. So let's jump into a few fast facts about the PMP exam and learning in general. This is why you should play the long game. Number one, people are different. People are different in a variety of ways. And I'm not talking about appearance. I'm talking about age. I'm talking about their leanings their interests. Some people are genuinely interested in project management. They've got a propensity to absorb all of this terminology. I'm like, where do you keep it? They've got that leaning. They've got that propensity. They've got a way with these PM words, leadership words, management words. You talk about work performance data, information, and reports. Some people get it in a minute. Other people, it takes them almost two, three months to really master just that concept. So I want you to understand we're different. There's neurodiversity, differences in how we process information, differences in how we think, differences in how we come up with solutions in specific areas. Put me in the area of project management, I may feel like I'm slow. Put me in the world of healthcare, and I'm a speed demon, I'm a whiz kid. So give yourself some allowance for diversity. We are all different. Number two, People learn differently. You could have someone sitting down in a class with an instructor. It happens all the time. People just plunk in front of me speaking. And they're like, I got so much. And within a few days after the course, off they go to the exam hall. And that's it. Done and dusted. On the flip side, you have other people who spend time going through the course, but it's not enough. They need to get onto a learning system. They need to comb through a lot of information, regurgitate the information, and that's okay. So if that sounds like you, I don't want you feeling like you're weird, you're strange. Why am I taking so long? I haven't been in school for the past 30 years, Phil. That's why, no, we're different. I've trained two individuals in the past year who are 70 years old, seven, zero that got certified. So it is doable, my friend, no matter how old you are. I want you to change that thinking to understand you are different 
and the way you approach this exam is going to be different. Number three, past experiences weigh in. Oh my goodness. People should give me a break when they say I got certified in five days. Yay me. Give me a break. You needed three years of professional project management experience. Yes or no? Yes. Some people's project management experience is so tailored to this thing that it's unbelievable how tailored their job is to this thing. So when someone comes at me and says, I got certified and I didn't do much work. Oh, be quiet. Your experiences, your trajectory in project management is very different from everyone else. So it's not accurate for you to say, Phil's brighter than me. He spent two days getting ready for this exam. And I spent two years, I must be dull. No, I had a student who came on our learning management system on a Thursday evening. His name is Parmeet Singh. I've talked about him on this channel quite a lot. Parmeet studied Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Goes into the exam on Monday, done and dusted. Now, someone would say, surely he went for a PMI, PMP 35-hour course. He didn't. He studied an MBA for his master's degree. Oh, now you can see. He obviously had an edge in the project management that he did to qualify for the exam. So when he came on our system on Thursday, he already had some background and some context. And he had a lean in towards this vocabulary. So I really want to encourage you, my friend, don't give up on yourself because you're seeing other people get certified, get an 80, 80, 80, and say, oh, I got certified in so short a time. Past experiences weigh in. Number four, it's not about quick. It's about does it stick? It's not about how quick you went through the process. There are many, many, many individuals, great individuals who have been through the exam and gotten certified in record time. But the question is, does it stick? Does the information that is relevant to their career actually stick? All the project management terminology and the ideas, does it stick? I got certified in 05. There's a ton of folks who got certified in 05, but I can guarantee you a lot of them, the content didn't stick. For me, it did stick. And I can tell you what I did with the content that stuck. It drove me to write over 12 books in project management, books about process, books about PMP mindset, books about being a great leader. Very recently with my buddy, Roy, I wrote this book, PMP Exam Immersion. This is bigger than the seventh edition. Think about it. Did the information stick? You bet. This is another book my buddy Roy and I wrote. It's called Agile Principle Roy and Cut. Did the information stick from my ACP? I made it stick. And I'm going to show you how you make the information stick. I'm going to show you how you can take your PMP prep to the next level so that beyond the certification, you are flying at optimum speed. Here's the final one. After all about it sticking, the next point is not about passing the test. It's about living your best. So my friend, I wanna encourage you, stop the stinking thinking of I'm dull, I'm slow, everyone else is quicker. There's some people who are just so obsessed with getting done quick. And it shouldn't be that way. Some people, instead of getting the information into them, they're doing all of this get certified quick schemes by trying to cover a lot of questions, hoping that the exam is full of repeat questions that other people have either shared on social media or that they've seen somewhere. That's not how to do it, my friends. Let the information sink in. Understand the mindset of agility, understand the manifesto, scrub through the manifesto, understand when PMI talk about systemic thinking in the principle, really understand what that principle is about. When the PMI talk about metrics and pitfalls of metrics, understand what that is. It can help your career. I'm in the business 
of helping project managers be the best version of themselves. And I can tell you the best version of yourself isn't one who crammed the day before to go regurgitate and spit out on the exam. And then once you're out of the test, you forget. What good is that? How does that help the profession? And that's why my disposition has always been one of diversity. Now I'm gonna show you my friends in the next section, the five C's to success on this exam by playing the long game. I want you to have a mindset of doing what you need to do within your capacity, within what you are able to do right now. Let's jump straight into that. Here are the five C's. Number one, these five C's are based on the word consistency. The very first consistency check is consistency creates culture. I want you to give yourself time. Let it marinate. Let it germinate. Let it grow over time. You don't plant an oak seed and expect, oh, I'm going to get a tree tomorrow. But when that tree grows in the passage of years, you get covering for a lifetime. I want you to create some consistency, my friends, in how you are studying. I want you to go for the long haul to create some daily consistency. Whatever you can commit to daily, one hour, let's start there. Become a creature of habit. There are gonna be growing pangs. As that oak tree is growing, there are gonna be pangs. But I want you to understand when you create some traction, some leverage through consistency, you will see results. I hear a lot of people saying, oh, page 25, I won't read that page anymore. I can't do it. I can't do that page in Pembok 6. The reason why they give up and they're looking at it as being so big is they're trying to do it in a day and that's not how it works. You gotta play the long game. Give yourself a week, two weeks, three weeks. I don't care, four weeks. If that's what it takes for you to understand the 49 processes that are still relevant to today, not talking about cramming, I'm talking about understanding. If you can give yourself that time to let it marinate and stick, by all means do it. Because I need you to know the 49, not to guess, but to really know what each one is and to be able to use your own words, your own illustration. Some of you are working on this tirelessly, but you're doing it the wrong way. Firstly, you're not breaking it down into bare bones, simple English. Secondly, you are not using examples from your real world of projects you've managed. Everyone taking the PMP exam says, I've got three years of professional project management experience. Then why is it so hard to look for a project example and dress the 49 processes around it? So we have a big problem when people say the 49 I don't want to spend time learning them and I don't even understand and I'm just going to be indifferent and I'm just going to think about, oh, what quick mindset can I use for the exam? Trust me, that's not the best version of yourself. You've got to know the content. It's part of your professional responsibility. Let's go to the second consistency check. Consistency check number two. Consistency creates clarity. The passage of time showing up daily, it creates clarity. All of those things that you are bewildered about, you will receive clarity on them if only you stay consistent. Not looking around at, oh, which question set am I going to do today to shorten everything because I just want the quickest way, not the best way. That's what a lot of people are doing. They're looking for the quickest way and not the best way. If you are consistent in your prep, my friends, what it's going to do for you is the same thing it did for me every single morning. I woke up and I had one CD from the company of the great Rita Mulcahy back in the day. This CD, I wore the CD out. 
my mentor, Mary Hirschner, gave me the CD. I would put the CD in. I would listen to the CD every morning without fail. It got to the point that I could actually quote the lady who was saying all these things, not Rita. She got a voice talent, but I could quote the voice talent. I could quote the voice talent word for word. I had listened to it that much. You got to be consistent, my friend. Some of the things that I learned back then in 05, they stuck and they're still with me today. So when I say your schedule must be barfed, I'm thinking about what she said on that recording, bought in to approve, realistic and formal. I'm thinking about all of the words I'd heard in those recordings. So I want to encourage you, play the long game. You got to be consistent to create clarity. It's doing it over and over, going back. Someone said you got to read it seven times before it sticks. So why are you giving up looking and saying, well, that guy got certified in like three weeks. She got certified in one week. I'm dumb. You're not dumb. You're smart. You got greatness within you. You've got intelligence within you. You've got a high tolerance for ambiguity. And you're going to find that out with consistency. You got to play the long game. Don't play short. Play the long game. Let's move on to number three. Consistency check number three. Consistency creates capability. What is capability? It's the power or ability to do something. When you show up daily and you're pounding on this thing daily, hitting that brick wall with a sledgehammer, it is going to give way eventually. You're going to learn how to speak the language with the consistency. You're going to apply a few words every day with consistency. I often tell my students, 10 words from PMBOK, 10 words from Agile Guide every day is going to get you to know all the vocabulary within four weeks. Play the long game, my friend. Number four, consistency creates competence. The more you do something, the better you get. The more efficient you're going to get and the more successful you're going to get at it. I encourage you to be consistent, to get competent. The final one is when all is said and done, you are gonna get to a point where you are ready. You may not feel ready. You may feel like you wanna go over this thing a few more times. You may feel like you wanna go over your buddy Phil and Roy's book a few more times, but I put it to you, you're ready. You just don't know it. I was speaking to a student a couple of days ago. The student said, well, one of my colleagues went into the exam, wasn't ready, but they only had a few days left on the one year and they had to go in and do it. And they got AT, AT, AT. I can't count how many times I've heard that. I wasn't ready, Phil, but I went in and I did it. Yeah, because you've been through the five consistency checks in one way or another. Everyone is different. Some of us need to show up for two months. Some of us need to show up for three weeks. Some of us need to show up for one week. Some of us may need to show up for two weeks. Some of us need to show up like Parmeet. Hey, Parmeet showed up for four days on a learning management system. Done deal on Monday, but not everyone is Parmeet. I called Parmeet to speak to my next group of students in New York back then when he got certified. And I told the students, this, this guy, don't try this at home. Don't try what Parmeet did at home. Not everyone's Parmeet. So if you're going in with that idea that, oh, I got to go in and do it like Parmeet did in four days, that's dumb. Don't do it. If you're looking to the left and right and seeing people who said, well, I did this and this and this and this, and I got certified in blink of an eye, it's foolish to think that's going to work exactly for you. We're all different. And dare I say, on the exam, you have a one in four chance on every question. It is very possible that things have aligned in the favor of some people. They get a good batch of questions. When I say good batch, I mean a batch that they're like, oh, this is my lucky day because I just kill those questions like there was no tomorrow. Um, no. I've had students who would go into the exam on a Tuesday and say, Phil, I did not finish. The exam was too hard. I had 
so many questions on risk, or I had so many questions that were asking about stakeholder and I couldn't process the information. And I didn't even finish my exam, Phil. I've heard it so many times. But I've also heard from similar students, failed it on a Tuesday, went in on a Saturday after getting some rest, some sleep, and they were able to pull it off and kill it just within a few days. And I've seen this happen a number of times. The question, why does this happen? Well, first of all, the questions you get does play in to your success. So those folks who are running around saying, oh, I got certified in record time, look at me, look at me. I guarantee you, you would not hear a peep out of those individuals if they didn't get certified. And that's not to say that those who didn't get certified are not smart. They just need more time, more embellishment. They just need certain things to be aligned. And that's why I encourage you, my friends, if you're thinking of quitting right now, don't quit. This is the final check, the final consistency check. Consistency creates credibility and it creates certification because your credibility comes through when you finally take the exam. And I am looking for you, my friend, to take this exam and blow this up because you can. Now I understand to be consistent, you need assistance. And I'm offering you assistance the month of February through a program that I have put together and trained over the past two plus years since PMI changed the exam. I call this PMP exam immersion. If you wanna be part of PMP exam immersion for three weeks, we're playing the long game in February, three weeks, I need you to go on down to our website, hpmexam.com. We've got brilliant offers for three weeks of training going on right now. You wanna go on there and get the first seats that you can. It's PMP exam immersion, it's via Zoom. Those who come for the session get a PDF download of this book. Those who come for the session also get 60 days of assistance on our learning management system. So if you are looking for a solution that is low cost, low risk, and is able to get you into the zone of excellence, you need to go to hpmexam.com. I'm telling you, some people take their families out for lunch and dinner, and they spend more than the cost of this course. It's very low cost. So I need you to go on there hpmexam.com, you will receive training that cuts across all you need to know for the PMP exam. It covers the people domain in week one, the process domain in week two, the business domain in week three, final mock exam when you're able to. Every week we have a clarifying quiz on people clarifying quiz on process, and one on business. In the book, we have tons of questions at the end of every task. You see, contrary to what people think, the PMP exam is not based on the PMBOK guide. If you didn't know, now you know. It's not based on this. It is based on the PMP exam content outline and we based this book on the 35 tasks in the PMP exam content outline. 35 chapters in this book. If this sounds like something you need, hand hold in and help every week end. We've done it at a time where it's convenient for people across the world, wherever you are. This is at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Dial into the program. It's on Zoom. If you want to come on camera, do that. If you've got questions, you've got concerns, you're pulling your hair out, make it a date. Consistency creates culture. Consistency creates commitment. 
consistency creates capability and it's going to create credibility, my friend. But you need to take the step. For how long are you going to be struggling on your own? Watching boring videos that barely move you forward. Watching boring courses that hardly give you traction for action. You're pulling your hair out. You're discouraged. You're thinking like you may never take this exam. Go on down to hpmexam.com. And this is a course that we're going to have multiple times throughout the year. So if this is something you want to do, my friend, again, the website, hpmexam.com. Go on down there and see the steel that we have. For those who are wondering, the PMP exam, what is it based on? It's based on this, the PMP exam content outline. And you need to master the details in the outline real good to be able to pass the exam. 42% of the exam is from people, 50% is from process, 8% is from business. And if you drill down into this document for every domain, you have a bunch of tasks. For the people domain, you have 14. For the process domain, you have 17 tasks. For the business domain, you have four tasks. Every single week, we are going to be covering People, process, business, all of those tasks. We're going to be taking a look at the task from two angles. One, we will take a look at the tasks from a predictive perspective. And secondly, we will take a look at the tasks from an agile perspective. You will be hearing from a buddy Roy who joins us on this program through virtual video, you'll be hearing from him for every single one of those tasks, how you should process them from an agile perspective. And by the time you're done, you would have played the long game because you're gonna be with me for three weeks. You're gonna have clarity. You're gonna be able to interface with individuals who have been there, done that, because I'm going to be bringing a lot of my alumni on this program. But at the same time, you're going to be able to network with people who are also taking the exam, just like you. Some of those individuals might have had difficulties and obstacles. You could compare notes and share the way forward to help them and for them to help you. All right. Again, it's a long game for PMP exam success, any PMI certification. It's about the long game. So let's get going. Go on down to hpmexam.com, my friend. Take a look at the curriculum there. Take a look at the days in February. And if you're watching this after February, take a look at the site to understand when the next program is. Thank you very much. I wish you all the best. Believe in yourself. You absolutely can do this. You absolutely can and will get certified.